So moving on, now we um, are going to talk about the Magnificent Seven, accelerate your shift to digital using the seven real world use cases of the IT for IT standard. And um, this time it really is a double act. Um, Jan Stobi is the managing enterprise, a managing enterprise architect from Capgemini. Uh, and Andy Platt, uh, Fujitsu Distinguished Engineer and Managing Consultant. So uh, first a little about, uh, about Jan. Jan is based in Norway. He advises large organizations transforming to successfully adopt modern technology and practices, as well as to maneuver the challenges that digital brings about. He's convinced that digital transformation requires above all organizational and behavioral change driven by technology, technological innovation and invention. He is safe, design thinking, agile, DevOps, and continuous delivery. Jan is a member of the Open IT for IT Forum and co-chair of the IT for IT Guidance Standing Committee. And uh, our other speaker in this session, Andy Platt, um, is working as a methods manager where he's responsible for developing, maintaining, improving, and deploying standard methods and practices for use by solution architects in developing products, service and infrastructure solutions. He's currently working on enhancements to existing methods to accommodate agile and DevOps requirements. Andy has worked in the IT industry for 40 years in roles covering service management, project management and techno uh, technical design. And Andy is a member of the Open Group IT for IT Forum and co-chair of the IT for IT Guidance Standing Committee. Gentlemen, welcome to you both, and um, let's hear about the Magnificent Seven. Thanks very much, Dave. Uh, Steve, just before you go, you forgot to mention, when you said 40 years, you're supposed to say, you don't look that old, Andy. Just I know, I know. Forgot, I know you forgot. <laughs> in, in, all, in all honesty, it did cross my mind, but um, <laughs> you, you said it for me. Um, hello, everybody, and welcome to this presentation on what we refer to as the Magnificent Seven. The Magnificent Seven Use Cases uh, for the IT for IT Standard. Now, before we get the obvious and very important question, I thought I'd answer it anyway. When we're talking Magnificent Seven, we are talking about the original Yul Brynner film, not the remake. So I just wanted to make that clear. Uh, as I said, my name is Andy Platt, as Steve has said, and Jan Stobie is my co-presenter. And we're the co-chairs of the Guidance Working Group for the IT for IT standard. Uh, I'm going to say next, and hopefully, Jan, well done, Jan. So what we intend to cover today is an explanation of what the guidance working group is and what our responsibilities are, and a plea for anybody who wants to join us and help us. A very brief introduction to the IT for IT standard, particularly version three, and then Jan is going to do the bulk of it, looking at the magnificent seven use cases. Next. So, the IT for IT guidance working group is basically a group of volunteers from across the industry, from suppliers, uh, tools developers, academia, and others who are looking to increase awareness and understanding of the value of the IT for IT standard. Uh, we've got the mission statement up there. Um, the IT for IT standard, and you've seen some examples as you've gone through the day, is great and offers really detailed information. What our working group is looking at is how to take the detailed standard with all the vast richness of material and provide supporting materials that can help decision makers and practitioners understand where the IT for IT standard can be practically used to add real value to business. So it's a basically it's a forum where people who have good ideas or practical experience can share and collaborate to produce more material, which can then be made available to the wide community of people who are using or looking to use the IT for IT standard. If anybody is interested in joining us, uh, we are looking for new volunteers or mugs, as they're sometimes referred to. Uh, please reach out to us using the link at the bottom of the page. Next slide. So, what is the IT for IT standard? Well, basically, 
trying to explain the IT for IT standard, all 180 pages of it in three minutes is a bit of a challenge, but I'll do my best. First thing to note is that it is an open industry standard developed by representatives from across the industry. Version three is focused on providing a blueprint for how we can provide a life cycle management solution for digital products. And that's what it's focused on, but it does cover hybrid estates as well. But what does that mean in reality? Well, the IT for IT uh, standard describes the activities that deliver value to the business, the end to end network of activities and underpinning responsibilities. It is focused on digital products from concept. So somebody has a great idea through to development into operation and eventually retirement. So the whole life cycle. It defines the information model that supports this end to end model sufficient to enable concepts such as release trains, agile release trains, CI, continuous integration, continuous deployment to exist. It also defines the functions, both at an organizational and technical level, those functions that are needed to deliver the business value across agile or DevOps life cycles. Uh, one of the benefits of the IT for IT standard is that it goes into real detail. For example, it defines the specific data objects and data flows required to enable all the integrated approach and all the integrated tools that are needed to deliver solutions across all the stakeholders and across all stages. Next slide. I'm going to take a, a little bit longer to talk about this slide. This is the version three value network straight out of the book for digital product management. What it is showing you is the key set of value streams that are required to define and manage the delivery of digital value. Each of these um, value streams, evaluate, explore, integrate, represent the activities that de deliver a required result for customers or stakeholders or end users. This value must be aligned, obviously, to the business's organization model. Now, just a rough summary, the value streams are the evaluate, which is somebody reviewing the digital product portfolio, which we were just been talking about in just in section, looking for new opportunities to better align what we've got with the business strategy. Once we've had an idea, exploring, looking at new features or future directions to meet the need for innovation within the business. Integrate is the activities to build new product releases, preparing them to be deployed. And we then have deploy and release. Deploy is making sure we've got a new or updated product release into production. Release we have split out and it takes a product and turns it into a service offer that uses the digital products and makes it available to consumers. Uh, we also have consume, which is how the business consumes service offers at different phases right through the life cycle. And finally, the area that most of us are more uh, experienced with, the operate. Maintaining the live digital products, availability, compliance, security, as we've heard about during today, and usability. Next slide. But you may be wondering, and we often get asked, how does this IT for IT standard fit with all the other service management methods and assessment frameworks that we hear about? Well, personally, I'm an ITIL expert. I am certified in ISO 20,000. I'm a safe practitioner. But for me, the IT for IT standard is different. Unlike some frameworks, it's an open standard. It's not proprietary. It's a reference architecture that defines how to automate the activities across the whole life cycle of managing an IT set of services. It is aligned with Agile, and version three has been written to make sure it aligns with Agile approaches such as SAFE. It is tailorable, so if you've got 
not if you've got pure digital products fine if you've got a hybrid estate it can be tailored to meet those requirements it works with and supports other methods such as ITIL and ISO 20,000. Now that sounds great, but the issue with any standard is that it can feel a bit potentially dry and theoretical. So what we've done is captured seven practical use cases for the IT for IT standard, which Jan will introduce you to. Now, you may be able to think of other practical use cases and we do intend to collect more of these as we progress and we get more knowledge and people use version three more i have to say though if you add another five to the seven we've got it might mean we have to change the name from the magnificent seven to the dirty dozen and i think marketing might object to that one over to jan thank you uh, andy um so the IFD reference architecture, as Andy pointed out, is a little bit of a, a little bit of a Swiss Army knife. You know, there's there's many practical applications for it, but at the end of the day, you use the blade and the corkscrew. So the past years, the IT for IT practitioner community within the IT for IT forum has collected seven use cases to inspire other practitioners on where IT for IT is a purposeful tool. So I'm. Um, to, uh, in uh, in the name of the uh, magnificent seven, let me tell you a story of the of these and 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 the Western movie lovers among you might recognize the plot. Are a gang of Buka bandits periodically raids the digital enterprise? After the latest raid, during which the bad Buka gang paralyzed just another critical delivery, the main stakeholders of the digital enterprise decide they have had enough. On the advice of their trusted IT for IT management consultant. They decide to fight back. Together, they turn towards the Open Group IT40 standard to help them regain flow, agility, and effectiveness. So let's look at the seven use cases, or should I say plots, um, for this magnificent seven story. Due to the limit of the time in this talk, I will only briefly touch upon each case. If a case hits a nerve, please refer to the detailed description of the use case. So use case one is about IT for IT reference architecture being used as a blueprint for defining the end-to-end -to -end tool trying to deliver digital products. That's maybe the most known one. It is common wisdom that adoption of agile practices, continuous delivery and DevOps practices allow us to develop, de develop, deliver, and learn faster. But we can't do agile and DevOps because our tools won't talk to each other. The tooling landscape, which has evolved in an unplanned manner, is overlapping, fragmented, and disconnected. By letting teams going rogue in the adoption of Agile and DevOps practices, there is a risk of further fragmentation in data islands. There is a lack of automation, integration, and insight across the digital technology tool landscape. So what we need is an overarching architecture to act as the blueprint for digital technology decisions. IT for IT to the rescue. Use of the IT for IT standard helps deliver a consolidated, modern, and automation-ready tool chain that accelerates flow, lowers the cost and complexity of digital product delivery. So CIOs, for example, can demonstrate to the business that they provide a consolidated, modernized, and automated tool chain, which accelerates adoption of digital transformation and reduces costs. Another example might be release train engineers. They use the IT for IT standard to build an integrated set of tools to facilitate digital product delivery for their product. In use case two, the IT to IT reference architecture standard is being used as a blueprint for defining interfaces and integrations between tools. The stakeholders inside the digital organization are facing challenges connecting tools and changing and, ch and exchanging information. They have a complex landscape with different processing tools and minimal integrations. Vendors keep offering them silo solutions for specific purposes, yet integration is a nightmare. On top of this, Tool vendors have their own proprietary integration platform and interface specification. To share data is a real struggle. Let's look at the vendor perspective. Tool vendors can provide fit for purpose solutions, but need to convince clients that new tools will integrate with clients' existing tool chain. Vendors might feel it is challenging to rationalize their own portfolio of product offerings that resulted from mergers and acquisitions, or perhaps organizational challenges like 
So IT4IT to the rescue again. Vendors can provide standardized interfaces and data models in their tool sets based on an open standard. Both vendors and digital practitioners can create a blueprint from the IT4IT standard for the desired state of their tool chains integration landscape across the entire value chain and integrations required for traceability of the product lifecycle. Use case three is in its core about data-driven decision support and how to define a data model across the digital enterprise, making data available and thus improving data and thus improving data flow and quality across the digital value network. The business has a lack of insight. Are we getting what we asked for? Where is that feature or that functionality you've been waiting for? Delivery is ineffective due to things getting thrown over the fence across lifecycle from exploration to development to deployment to operations. The flow of data is interrupted over and over again with multiple and even contradictory data. There are too few feedback loops. Design flaws are repeated and in the end, wrong behavior is reinforced. Altogether, this results in an ability to become agile. The threshold to adopt agile practice is simply too high, and there's really nowhere to start. IT4IT to the rescue. IT4IT provides an industry standard information model. It enables data integration between tools to increase transparency and improve decision making. Use case four describes how to use the capability and functional model of the IT4T standard to design the future state of the digital product management, formerly known as ITSM capability. Again, the as is situation can be described as evolution, evolutionary grown without an architecture roadmap, fragmented and disconnected in the people, process, tools, data, and control, and even in the integrations dimension. Using the IT4IT IT reference architecture, heat maps of the current and future state are created to, to be, depict the transformation journey. It won't happen overnight. Transformation sponsors can provide an easy to understand frame of reference that enables the right level of discussion with all relevant stakeholders to ensure that a common understanding of the current state, desired state, is achieved across the organization. Release train engineers use the IT4IT standard to build an integrated set of function and tools to facilitate digital product, de product delivery in their scope. Digital product development teams use IT4IT to co-create a target state and a roadmap with the business. Halfway through. So use case five leaves the tooling dimension and focuses on how using IT4IT accelerates implementing a product-centric digital operating model. Justin has been into that. And I'm, I think on one of the conferences uh, over a year ago, I had a similar talk. So maybe you can go to YouTube and find that one. Despite most organizations acknowledging that IT has become an integral part of the enterprise value generation, there are still some barriers left before becoming a truly digital enterprise. For example, that strategy and technology investments plans are still not co-created. So first you drive a strategy generation process and then you look at technologies. But right now, sometimes the technology actually drives the strategy, right? Another aspect might be a problem might be that traditional IT organizations work in silos rather than operating to rather together around the product centric value chain. And maybe most visible customers employees alike are frustrated by the lack of the digital user experience. So how does IT4IT help? Decision makers and practitioners can use the IT4IT content as an education tool for why and how to make the shift to digital product. Then they can use the IT4IT value network and the seven value streams to plan the operating model transformation. Two to go. Use case six is about using the IT4IT standard for roadmap development and communication of key improvements. Here are some of the common challenging challenges that are addressed in use case six. Stakeholders can justify organizational process changes. On the contrary, new tools are often implemented without looking at supporting processes and the organizational impact. IT leaders struggle to explain and show the value of investments and developments in ways the business understands. So by using IT for IT, 
digital practitioners and vendors can explain to business stakeholders which organizational functions, roles, data, and tools need to be in place to support different parts of the organization. Decision makers on their end use IT for IT to analyze and assess the organizational dependencies required to enable new ways of working. So, for example, if we want to um, adopt DevOps, what do we need to address and who do we need to talk about it? Finally, in use case seven, IT for IT is used to form a governance model for product portfolio management across the lifecycle. It aims to solve problem scenario, the problem scenario of inconsistent tooling landscapes characterized again by overlap, duplication, and low connectivity, altogether hindering flow and agility. Furthermore, it addresses the lack of data and lack of appropriate access controls that make it very difficult to monitor governance and compliance requirements ac across the entire digital product value chain. So practitioners, uh, can use IT for IT to model the flow of work across the capabilities and functions and tools and organizations in the organization. Um, in the entire digital value network and base their monitoring and auditing on that model. That's it. Um, those were the seven cases. Please, Andy, now it's time to wrap up. I'm still here. I'm still here, Jan. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just before anybody asks, the number of roles and uh, people who participate in it are not just limited to those seven personas we put up on the screen. When you get into the detail, obviously, there's a lot more. Now then, so what have we created so far in uh, the committee around version three? Well, you've seen the summary. This is a summary set. And for each of those seven use cases, we've got a full PowerPoint deck. And what that does, is it covers a summary of what is the stakeholder challenges, looking at a range of stakeholders across the business. The problem scenario, how would the problem manifest itself and what are the symptoms that the business will be suffering from? A solution overview as to what good looks like, how would we help with this? And then guidance, how you, as to how you would apply IT for IT to this particular problem, and then the benefits and outcomes you can expect. Next slide. Now, each of those Magnificent Seven has its own PowerPoint, which is on the uh, publications in the IT for IT library. This presentation you're looking at today, which Jan and I are confusing our way through, is going to be available next week uh, in the previous events proceedings, and then it will be moved to the IT for IT library. Behind each of those seven Magnificent Seven, we're also going to be creating papers. The first one has been done, which is the Guide to Tool Rationalization, um, and there will be other papers being produced which will go into the IT for IT library. And if anybody wants to contribute, please feel free to do so. This is a community. We're trying to increase the amount of community knowledge. Just for information, those uh, organizations which are members, um, the, the new version of V3 has gone out for company review. And we are now looking for feedback on that. So all of the member organizations have got access to version three. There is a snapshot already visible in the IT for IT library if anybody wants to understand the summary of what it is. Right, so I'm just going to reinforce one other point. I mentioned before that IT for IT, and I think, uh, Jan, the analogy that you use, which I really like, is the Swiss Army penknife. It's a tool, and we all carry tools in our kit bag when we're doing consultancy or design work or implementing new solutions. My personal favorites, I'm, I've been ITIL trained since 1993, which makes me very, very old. ISO 20K I have in my kit bag. IT for IT I've used in multiple scenarios. But I also use COVID, control objectives for IT. I use SAFE on a daily basis. So this is another vital tool in anybody's kit bag. Next slide. <clears throat> Set. That's it. We're down to questions and answers, or answers and questions, whichever you prefer. That was smooth, Jan. I thought we did well. Oh, by the way, nice I have job. to ask, I did like Julie's comment because that is the primary case that I've seen. For, I, that is where I've been testing 
the version three of the IT for IT standard is where people are trying to put together an integrated full release train set of tool sets from concept through to automated deployments, linking into the service desk and configuration management. This is where a lot of people are currently saying, this is what we want to achieve, but are really suffering. The new version is great at giving you a framework to approach that problem. Fantastic job, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Nice, nice, um, nice coverage of the topic and a little humor involved, of course. Um, but I was just way, uh, which two uses of the so I mean, maybe it'd be interesting to uh, hear what some of our attendees use as well. But I bet there's uh, one that you mentioned that gets more use than any other. Um, but let's um let we've got a panel session coming up but i just want to take uh one quick um question because you asked for uh, more participants uh mm -hmm. one of the questions that came in was uh what time zone do you have your meetings at the uh, it for it guidance standing committee the it is well i can tell you what it is uk time it's early morning in america it's four o'clock uk five o'clock in your time is it jan Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, so eight, 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 eight a.m. Pacific. Yeah. Anyway, if you're interested, um, uh, they'd love to. They'd love to have you. Uh, and there's also a request for reposting the link where people can contribute. Um, and uh, a, a, you you had on the last slide there a reference to the fact that the uh, members are company reviewing the uh, version three standard right now but for those of you who aren't employed by member organizations um um take a look at whether you should be um but also you can look at the snapshot that is available um in the, in the library um the question is uh, that one of the questions has come in is the snapshot available for public comment um my answer from memory is there is a um, there is somewhere in the snapshot document where it tells uh, tells you where to send comments but if that's not right then somebody correct me before the end of this session please linda i think is on the call she'll probably correct us if we're wrong i'm sure that's true um so let's um thank you both very much